This is Twit. Earlier this week, Google uh, stopped all the leaks in their tracks, which is a, kind of a, a game plan that Google, at this point, we kind of expect from Google, as, at least as related to uh, their Pixel hardware, uh, by outing the upcoming Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro officially. These devices are not expected to be released uh, until sometime in the fall. Usually October-ish seems to be the time frame based on previous years. Um, but we now at least know far more about it officially from Google's mouth um, you know, we knew a little bit here and there from leakers, but now we've got Google uh, weighing in. And Sherilyn Lowe from Engadget was actually in the room with Google, with Rick Osterlow, who leads the, the Pixel hardware department and the devices. And uh, she's here now to talk about them. Welcome to the show, Sherilyn. Hey, Jason. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to get you on. Always happy when we, get, we can get you onto the show. So thank you. Um, so you were one of few journalists who were at one point in the past week or so in the room with these devices. It's um, as we know from the past, you know, when it comes to devices and especially devices with with hardware that looks different than hardware we've seen before, as is the case with the Pixel 6. Um, when you see them online, it's one thing. When you see them in person, it's something else. I know I've seen phones online, you know, on leaks and everything. I've been like, God, that's fugly. And then you get it in person, you're like, wait a minute. Actually, that's pretty cool. I actually like it in person. Um, from, from a design perspective, what did you think being in the room with them? Did you have a color choice? Like, what were your thoughts there? Can I just, I might be a bad tech reporter for this because I didn't even really see any leaks or leaked images before I went into this meeting. I, I think either that or they've all blended together into this mess. Like I didn't have, <laughs> it happens. basically I'm the type of person that doesn't watch the movie trailer before going to see the movie. And sure. uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, when I went in to see them, I was just pleasantly surprised. I mean, yes, they look very different, but they're bold. And, and you know, I, I think that, the Pixel 5 was just kind of bland, right? I think we were all just yeah. very underwhelmed by the 5 that like to see the 6 have such a clear direction, even if you you don't like it, right? I think it's at least saying something about Google's efforts this time around. Um, I like them myself. In person, I'd say the, I mean, we were in like a room with somewhat warm light. So maybe that threw off some of the color a bit. It's definitely not as... I, there's a bit more like subtlety to the colors, I would say, in person. And they're shinier. <laughs> That's one thing I was like, oh, in person, they're shiny. Uh, it looked like they were like glass covered. It, they felt good. Um, I, I like them. I like looking at them. I liked holding them. They felt premium. And that's another question I keep getting. They both felt very premium. Nice. And, and Google has been emphasizing that point, especially because, like you said, the Pixel 5, I mean, it's what I'm using right now. You know, I, I have a case on mine, which I'll probably have a case on the mm -hmm. 6 also. Very curious to see how that works with that uh, bit large uh, camera, you know, bar and how a case fills yeah. out the space that's left behind. But Google is very insistent that, they, you know, they're... They're pulling out all the stops to make sure that they target these phones as in, like the, the premium, the top of the heap. Um, and, and to that end, if you like having seen the devices in person, like is there a device that you could compare kind of the build quality and everything? Like when I think of like some of the top end uh, premium flagships that just really feel expensive, let's say, when you have them in your hand, I think of some of Samsung's uh, flagships. Is this of that category? Or would you compare it differently? Yeah, uh, I spoke to some of my other, uh, you know, friends in the industry who also happened to see the phone. I think we were just all passing each other as we were, you know, taking turns to go into the meeting room or whatever. Uh, yeah. And one of the um, big takeaways is that it feels like a Note. It feels actually oh. almost like the Note 20 Ultra, uh, at least the Pixel 6 Pro, because it's bigger. You know, that one has a, a 6.7 inch screen, I believe it was confirmed, and uh, slightly curved glass on the screen. So very Note-like touches. That very squarish design also is very reminiscent of a Note. Uh, I will say, though, that like with the colors and that bar, it still retains some Pixel-esque DNA. I like the bar. Uh, having seen it, having seen how it like re remains steady on the surface, um, let me put it here, there will be a slope, but it doesn't like wobble from side to side, mm -hmm. which, you know, annoys the heck out of me with modern camera bumps. So this one at least doesn't do that. I thought that was nice. So yeah, to compare it, to, I mean, I think the closest comparison would be like a note, uh, uh, 
recent note, I would say. Okay. And that's, I think that's a pretty strong comparison because the recent notes uh, from a design perspective, at least are solid devices. They're some of my favorites. Uh, the, the last one in particular, um, the, now, the, you know, Oh, sorry. One quick Go. note. The one thing that concerns me about that is that the, the jump in weight is, is noticeable. Like I'm used to a pixel phone, everyone who doesn't use a pixel. And whenever I hand them my phone, they're like, Oh my gosh, it's so light. Yeah. Uh, that's not the case. The Pixel 6s are definitely heavier than their than their predecessors, uh, but felt in line with with phones of today. Oh, cool. Did they actually give you the, the chance to like paw at the phone a little bit? Or yeah, was it yeah. Just... They were like, okay. I was like, oh, I can see them. They were like, feel free to pick one up. Take, oh, you know, very take, nice. Take, put your hands nice. on it. <laughs> I was like, okay, nice, yeah. <laughs> very good. Because that does tell you some, a little bit something about um, about build quality. Sometimes you can tell yes. when a phone's kind of hollow and that gives you the, right. the uh, this essence of, of inexpensive or whatever. And if they're going for premium, uh, it's good that they allowed you to do that. Now, okay, so part of the story here is, of course, the design, which is very different for Pixel phones, let alone for smartphones, uh, especially in the Android world right now. But the other part, and some would say that the larger part of the story is the fact that these are the first phones to be running Google's own mobile system on a chip. They're calling it Tensor, which makes a lot of sense. Google likes to, you know, stay in line with with their previous marketing things uh, until suddenly they get tired of it and change it for no apparent reason. Right now, they're sticking <laughs> with Tensor, so that's the that's the chip name. Um, do you believe that this Tensor chip can actually compete with other top tier chips? Like they're not, you know, they're no longer going with the Snapdragon, the latest and greatest Snapdragon, which is what the majority of smartphone makers, at least here in the U.S., have been doing, including Google. They're not doing that here. They're going with their own. Do you think that? Uh, based on what you know and you've seen that they can compete there? It's really hard to say just because to be clear, they haven't uh, released all of the information about Tensor just yet. It's TPU base and it's ISP does this. And then, you know, no word on, you know, which Cortex design, which high efficiency cores, which GPU, you know. And so, you know, I asked and I tried to kind of grill Osterlo a little bit more on this, like, uh, how are you able to make sure all of this performs at a certain, you know, thermal, um, a, a level that competes with what's out there? And then, you know, I was like, did you work with anyone else on this? Because Google has never made chips that we know of just yet. You know, like it's unproven mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like they're clear on whether they will share if they've worked with uh, someone like well-known in the space. Osterla said something along the lines of, yeah, you know, we usually, you know, work with a bunch of, you know, semiconductor contractors, that sort of thing. So like, it, it was a very vague answer. Um, one of the answers uh, he gave to, and I said that, don't you think that people might find Google an unproven, you know, company in this space? And he was like, well, but I think people are, you know, he, he conceded right? That that is true. But he also then said that like, but I think Google know, people know that Google, you know, is good at the stuff. And, and along that sort of line is what he was saying that like, people should trust us. And I think that's a lot to ask if you're not going to mm -hmm. name a partner that's, uh, you know, had at least years of pushing out this stuff. Um, I am reserving my judgment until we learn more. And that's all I can say, like, until I see that in the fall, they're not, they're definitely saying it's just Google that's worked on this because I can't rule out that they worked with, say, Samsung co designed it. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and until we can actually use the phone to see how hot it runs when they're applying these like intense computational tasks, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm yeah. hesitant. That's, that's all yeah. I can say. Good. Well, no, I, and, and that's important. I mean, I mean, being in the room with the device for, you know, maybe an hour and, and seeing their carefully crafted demonstrations and everything right. only tells you so much. And of course they're going to show you the good stuff, which, which speaking of some of those demonstrations, like what stood out, uh, as being different from what we've already seen on smartphones so far. And, and you know, they had a, a couple of demonstrations that they were showing uh, reporters like you um, to kind of demonstrate the power of the Tensor chip without telling you very much mm -hmm. about the chip itself. Um, what stood out for you uh, in those demonstrations? So of the four things that were shown, I think 
the things uh, the things that stood out to me was probably a live caption with a concurrent translative only because that was the one dem- demo that seemed to be done in real time the others were like pictures before and after pictures and and you know video comparisons for the photography part and then you know one other thing was the um voice recognition through gboard um so with with at least with live caption with a new translate option um you can tell that the phone is pushing the chip to do a bit more, right? It's doing two things at once and it's doing yeah. it well. So that felt like a more concrete example of what Tensor can do and also a useful example of something that no other phone is doing at the moment. No no other phone's doing live caption to begin with. Now you're adding in Translate. So I think that that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, indeed. I'm really curious to see that. And if that is the if that is like the the baseline, you know, the three or four things that they showed you now, one can only imagine Google has plans for some really cool stuff down the line, uh, especially yeah. because they've they've built this chip and they've built this chip to do things like this. And they are right. a very strong entity when it comes to machine learning and uh, all this computational stuff that's happening behind Absolutely. the scenes that's done done magical things to even the camera you know in year in in recent years on the pixel which is kind of kind of leads into I think my last question because we're about out of time here but um I've felt and I, I know I'm not alone that the pixel camera is a, an incredibly strong uh thing you know part of the pixel experience has been for years they've mm-hmm. been using the same main lens on these cameras for for quite a while since i think the pixel yeah. 2 at this point little long of the tooth at this point um and we're seeing an upgrade on the number of cameras and everything uh on this new device like based on what you've seen like do you have confidence that they can kind of take these new lenses coupled with the computational uh, promises that maybe the tensor uh can can hopefully deliver and do something that that competes with the best of the best again? I mean, I think they've done really well. I don't think that like we're, I think we're reaching a point where you really can't complain too much about smartphone Mm -hmm. photos anymore. I think that Google for a while had a lead and then like Apple caught up and then Samsung caught up, but like everything's still kind of green, but then that's a Samsung color. You're going to just have to live with it. So with the, right, with the, with the new hardware, I think Google, we will see better clarity in pictures. We'll see cleaner uh, stuff, probably more uh, sharper stuff, better nighttime performance but are we really pushing the limits of or are we going to expect like really a huge jump in level of your photos and videos probably not just like apples to apples quality but if we're talking like what they can do with cameras from now on I think we'll see a difference in the sense that like how many multiple things can you do at once? Will your live stream be faster? Will you be able to apply a portrait blur to a photo? Like it's all the special effects, bells and whistles stuff that we're going to see a difference in as for kind of the base level of quality. I think we'll see an improvement, but not to the point where it's so huge that like we're going to blow our minds or something. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, totally. It, it occurs to me as I'm thinking about this, that one good example that I could totally see Google nailing in the next coming years, probably not this year, but maybe in the next few years, is the space zoom that we saw on Samsung's mm. phone in the last couple of years, right? The 100x zoom, which is basically right. unusable. You're never going to take that shot nope. and you're never going to, fr- I mean, and frame it or whatever. And now I think I saw that there's exactly. a phone with a 200x zoom. It's really just a feature that is meant to get you way closer to an object that you know is out there somewhere, right. less less so about taking a picture. But I could completely see Google using its computational yeah. smarts and prowess being like, all right, we're giving you space zoom, but we're going to give you a picture that you actually can do something with. Something you're, you're, I feel like you're basically, yeah, you're very on the so close to what they're probably doing with the Pro because the Pro has an additional telephoto lens that does up to four times optical zoom. And we know that like Google in the past um, has already done this uh, super res zoom thing where they're not, they're giving you zoom, yeah. but digital and, and because of their computational skills are able to clean it up so well. Combining that with an actual optical zoom, the quality we would get, I feel like this is not that far away, Jason. I think you were like right on the money there for this year, perhaps. Maybe not like intense levels, maybe not a hundred times levels, but that's probably one of the features they're going to talk about uh, in, yeah. in, in the fall launch. Excellent. Cause that's actually a very usable camera feature. I would love to see that improved.